right. The power of suggestion. And how does that make you feel? Tony didn't have to think about it much. He'd been thinking about it for the past several weeks, ever since he noticed the change in her behavior. It makes me angry, of course, <coughs> and hurt. Angry, the man sitting in the leather recliner repeated, ignoring the word hurt. Why? The clues are obvious. The sudden showers after being out with the girls, the sexy underwear she would never wear for me, even though I begged her. I'm not blind or stupid. Stupid, you feel stupid, the man repeated back. And angry, he added. Angry, how angry? Angry enough to divorce her? Angry enough to divorce her, he repeated. Angry enough to kill her, the man in the recliner spoke more as a statement than a question. Angry enough to kill her, the man affirmed matter-of-factly. Cheating on you like that is wrong. After all, you've given her. When you see the underwear on the bureau, you picture her with her lover, don't you? I picture her with her lover. When you see it, it makes you angry. Angry enough to kill her. Angry enough to kill her, Tony repeated back. The man in the leather chair pushed himself to a standing position. When you see the sexy underwear, you'll see the woman nearest to them as a stuffed animal. It will be safe to choke the animal because it isn't a living person. You can take all of your anger out on that object. Do you understand? Yes. When I snap my fingers, you won't remember this conversation. You'll feel relaxed and calm until you see the sexy underwear. Then you will get very angry and see a stuffed animal and choke it as hard as you can. Now wake up, and Dr. Tom snapped his fingers. Tony opened his eyes. How do you feel, Tony? Dr. Tom asked. Relaxed. Good. I always feel better after these sessions, he replied. Good. I understand that the wives have arranged for us getting together tonight, Dr. Tom told him. So I'll see you around 7. Great. I have to run and finish the office work. See you then. He took Dr. Tom's smaller hand in his and shook it closely. Some people, like Tony, were easy to put under. Others were more difficult. Dr. Tom was very glad that Tony was one of the easy ones, given that the affair he was having with Tony's wife, Linda, was, I'm sorry, given that he was having an affair with Tony's wife, Linda. He valued the friendship, but he loved Tony's wife more. The window overlooking the parking lot was convenient. As soon as Dr. Tom saw Tony exit the building, he pressed the speed dial to Tony's home. Okay, Linda, the trigger is set. It's the underwear. When he sees it, he'll get angry, and the suggestion I implanted him in him will drive him to choke the female closest to him, thinking she's a stuffed animal. That needs to be Mary. He'll see my wife, but picture her as a stuffed animal and choke her to death. Then you and I can end all this hiding nonsense. There was silence on the other end. Linda, are you there? Yes, it's perfect, love. My brother Chris will be here tonight. He'll be in uniform just coming off duty. It is so perfect. You are so perfect, love. No you. Gotta go. See you in a few hours. The dial tone returned. Dinner had been wonderful. Chris was checking his texts downstairs as Tony and Linda joined Mary and Dr. Tom in the master bedroom to admire the recently installed hot tub. That's when Tony saw the sexy panties and bra Linda had accidentally left on the sink side. Tony stared for a second, then visibly seethed. He moved to Dr. Tom and throttled him. Dr. Tom was taken off guard, and his small frame was no match for Tony's workman hands and linebacker size. The women watched and shrieked at Tony to stop. Chris ran up the stairs, his boots audibly announcing his advancement. He yelled at Tony to stop, but the big man continued a few, few more seconds until the audible snap made it clear that it was too late. Dr. Tom slumped to the floor, eyes rolled back into their sockets. Chris easily subdued Tony, forced him to the ground, and handcuffed him. Mary screamed, and Linda lay in a crumpled ball crying. Chris used his phone to call for backup and held Tony face down to the floor with his foot. He just went berserk. He was our friend. Why would he do that? I don't know, I don't know. I'm so sorry, Linda said between sobs, holding her friend in a tight grip. I need to go to the station, but I'll be back, Chris told him, told, told them, before walking Tony downstairs. From the master bedroom window, they watched Chris and his partner leave with the killer. As the squad car pulled away, the two women rubbed their eyes and sat close to one another on the bed. Like it was hard to reprogram the hypnosis, Mary smirked, 
Before I left the practice to raise Billy, it was twi twice the hypnotist he ever was. Men are so easy, Linda agreed. Flash a little skin, make a couple suggestions, and they'll do anything, including do themselves in. Linda ran her fingers lightly through Mary's long hair. <laughs> now they'll both be out of our lives and we can be with who we really want, Linda. You Linda used Mary's hair to pull her face close. She lightly bit her bottom lip as she let out a soft moan. And you look so hot in that underwear. How about putting them on for me and modeling them? How does it make you feel when you wear them? <laughs> totally under your control. Okay, Ellen, you had one more. You want to do yeah, one yeah. more? Okay. Close